In this video, I'm going to be talking about the precautions I take while traveling to take care of my mental health. I'm going to cover things like how I deal with time zone shifts, medications, even how I sleep, and at the very end of the video, I'm going to tell you the biggest thing I do that helps me avoid episodes. Now, traveling is one of my biggest passions, but it comes with a whole list of things that I have to do in order to keep my trip from becoming a nightmare. But it is manageable, and I'm going to tell you how I do it. And if you are new here, my name is Kit, and I have something called schizoaffective disorder, which is a condition where someone experiences symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, either major depression or, in my case, bipolar. This video will mainly cover things related to vacations, but many of these tips can be applied to other trips as well. So now that we have the basics covered, let's get into the video. Up first is dealing with time zone shifts when it comes to medications. One of the hardest things about being on so many important and necessary psych meds is that I have to take them roughly at the same time each day. I can be off by maybe a few hours, but honestly, when it comes down to it, there's not a ton of wiggle room. During my last trip, there was a five to six hour difference, and that's no small thing. And I hesitate to say how I deal with this because I'm not a medical professional of any kind. So I can't give medical advice, and I don't want you to take anything I say here as such, so consider this a verbal disclaimer. But for me, I slowly shifted the time I took those meds little by little each day so that by the time I got to that foreign country, it wasn't such a big shift when I took them at my normal time. But talk to your doctor about shifts like that because really you don't want to end up in a situation where you accidentally take too much of your medication or you go into withdrawal from taking too little. Because all psych meds have different side effects, half-lives, and picky requirements. So what works for me might not work for you. But once you do clear it with your doctor, I highly recommend going into the world clock feature on your phone and then entering in the time zone that you wish to adjust to and then using that to kind of get your bearings when you're making those, those shifts. Plus, it keeps you from having to do math every five seconds. No one wants to do math every five seconds. Use the app and save yourself some grief. But continuing on with medications, let's talk about the logistics of traveling with psych meds. I have several prescriptions that I need to take every day, some of them multiple times a day, and all of them are vital for my mental health. But one of the problems that I ran into on my last trip was that the refill dates for some of my meds were due in the middle of the vacation. So I will tell you something I found really helpful. If you don't know already, most insurance companies, at least in the States, will cover an early refill if you need one while you're traveling. So if you're in the position where you're gonna run out of meds on your trip, save yourself some trouble, call your doctor and get an early refill. And once you have the meds, make sure you bring way more than you need because what if you get stuck where you're going? Bad luck can happen, airports can be a nightmare, and not having enough psych meds to get through a situation like that is something that no one should have to experience. And speaking of airports, don't put all of your medications in a checked bag because sometimes checked bags get lost and you don't want to be left without your medication. The way I do it is I carry two bags and I split up the pills between them. The first bag has the amount of meds I need for the trip plus a few extra days of buffer. I keep that in my purse or what airports would call my personal item and that bag stays with me at all times. However, I also have a rather large emergency supply and I store that in my carry-on bag. The big idea here is that you wanna have two sources of meds so that if one fails, you have a backup. And when you're exploring on your trip, make sure you keep at least a few doses in your pocket or in your purse, just in case. But final thing on this, make sure you leave some at home too, so you have that to fall back on if you lose everything. And maybe I'm a little paranoid. I mean, I am schizoaffective after all, it's possible. But in this case, just cause I'm paranoid doesn't mean I'm wrong. Also, make sure all your medications are in their original bottles with labels, your name, all that good stuff. Because you don't want to get in trouble with airport security, trust me. The next big thing is dealing with sleep while traveling. As part of my schizoaffective disorder, I experience bipolar symptoms, and one of the biggest triggers for bipolar episodes is sleep disturbances. So I can't make a video about traveling without talking about sleeping tricks when it comes to mood disorders. Now, an honorable mention for this part of the video is that there is a gold standard way to deal with this kind of thing, and it's that you adjust your time zone to the target time zone over the course of a few days to a week. 
So basically, me, I went to Europe recently, I live in the States, so if I was to do this tip in the days leading up to flying into London, I would slowly adjust my sleeping schedule to match that on London time so that when I ended up in London, I was already on the schedule, easy peasy. And then when it's time to come home, I'd adjust it in the same way, getting back on United States time, and then I'd be good to go when I got back to the States. But as you can probably already figure out, that's not really practical, and that's a lot of time that well, a lot of people just don't have. So it doesn't really work for most people and it's never actually worked for me, but I wanted to mention it anyway, just in case you are in a position where it might work for you. So again, honorable mention. But now I'm gonna tell you what I actually do. I'm from the East Coast of the States, which means that when I go to Europe, the time zone jumps ahead. For me, I try to get overnight flights when I go to Europe because I usually arrive in the morning Europe time. So it's a way for me to kind of trick my brain into trying to get on Europe's schedule. And from there, I just try to stay consistent with my sleep schedule as much as I do when I'm at home. I just switch to Europe's time zone and then do my best to keep with it. I try to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day in the hopes that, well, I'll avoid a mood episode. And of course, continuing to take my medication as prescribed does help reduce the risk of episodes as well. My medication doesn't make me invincible to the effects of time zone shifts, but it does make things more manageable and less likely to happen. The first few days of this last trip I went on were a little rough, but I got through it and I was fine after that. The next thing is emergency contacts and medical information and why on earth you need them. So I actually have, if you don't know already from watching my videos, I have a medical bracelet on me at all times and it looks like this. And basically this little buddy has a few things on it. It has my diagnoses, it has my emergency contact numbers, and it has in big letters, C wallet card. And it's that last one that's the most important. Because the wallet card is where all the information about the meds and the doses I take are kept. And it's where my doctor's phone numbers are and more information about my emergency contacts. I include everything medical that I can possibly think of that would be of use to an emergency medical technician, a paramedic, or a doctor at the ER. So if someone really needed my information, they'd open up my wallet, and then there would be an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with every single thing about Kitso and all of her medical conditions, easy to read and laid out. And of course, that's just how I do it. These days, phones are even equipped to carry all the medical information you need. So if you don't wanna carry a wallet card and <laughs> wear a medical bracelet, you can also just put the information in your phone as well. But it needs to be somewhere and it needs to be with you at all times. Because you can't be too careful when it comes to these things because a lot of mentally ill people take more than one prescription and medical providers, specifically those in emergency medicine, need to know what someone is on in order to treat them safely. The last thing you need is to have something awful happen while you're traveling and not have any way to communicate what meds you're on, what doses you take, the symptoms you experience, the conditions you have, and even your allergies or other medical conditions. So a wallet card can explain to them what you might not be able to explain for yourself. So again, do what works best for you, but make sure that whatever method you choose, it's on your person at all times. Now I wanna end this video by talking about the number one thing I do that helps me avoid episodes on trips. To start, I found that one of the biggest triggers for schizoaffective episodes for me is stress. Everyone deals with stress differently, but for me, I have a psychotic disorder, so when I get stressed, I get sent into psychosis and mood episodes. So I take time to rest and relax on my trips and try not to push myself too much, if at all, and that mostly takes care of it. I never have a vacation where I try to cram in everything I possibly can because I just can't handle that. What I usually do is plan to do one big thing a day and then spend the rest of the time taking it easy. With downtime built into the trip's itinerary, I feel more relaxed and refreshed. With room to breathe and stress is minimized. It is vacation after all. So it's okay to take a nap in your room. It's okay to come back early and read or play video games. It's okay to not do everything that's available to you. Yes, I understand that for many of us, me included, there is a fear of missing out, but you'll thank yourself later, trust me. Rest is good. And there's nothing wrong with you if you need a little bit more than everyone else. So sleep, take your meds, relax a bit, and you'll be just fine. And that covers at least a few of the major topics surrounding travel and mental health. If I missed something, let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, feel free to check out any of my other videos on this channel and do consider subscribing. It's a free way to help a girl out. But thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.